Oh, she's barking again. She's shouting this she is. Yeah, she is. Here we go, Dean. Fairy Village Woods. Walk and talkie. There you go. Okay, doggy. Well, there's a little uh, giddy girl. Now reserved. So that's good. Hi. Little giddy girl. Right, explain to the person who's getting giddy. That uh, Giddy and Flopsy and little Stanley, because they're the smallest ones, they were put onto mum. Yeah, separate from the bigger ones to give them a chance to feed and feed well. And once they're fed, I then put them back with the others. So when I took them out from the others to go to mum, of course they were wiggly, wiggly, wiggly woos. You know, just trying to get to mum because they knew it's feedy time. So as soon as they smelt mum, that's it, they want to get away. Give me mum, give me mum. Yeah, as soon as they're fed, oh, they would be lovely. Quite happy to get a belly rub and, <laughs> and a cuddle because they've been fed now. They were happy babies. So, of course, now they're associated, they start to associate cuddles with food. So, of course, they love cuddles. So, aye. But that's part of it. That's part of the thing. And then I started doing that with the bigger ones as well. So I'd have Amber in the lounge while the pup's in the shower. And then, yeah, move that to do the job. Since I have poo bags on it, I'll take that. That'd be useful. Favourite There you go. Right, so, hi. So, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, doing that, encouraging the puppies to like cuddles. That's what it's all about. That's what you've got to do with pups. Yeah, because that's the whole thing about pups. You want pups that want cuddles and want loves and, yeah, you know, all that. Lot. Yeah, that's the important point. Amber, leave. Walk away. Walk away now, bubs. Nothing even there. I don't know what she's trying to eat. Nothing there to eat. Yeah, she's trying to eat nothing, basically. Okay. As you do. <laughs> you want to eat nothing? Come and eat nothing. Lucy, nah. That's poo. Leave it alone. All right, so... Yeah, that's, that's lovely. I mean, I took the uh, the three girls that were still available for a walk with this gentleman. That was our first walk. And again, Giddy did fantastically well. So that was good. Yeah, so that's probably why he picked her, because she was slightly more adventurous. Now, on their first walk, you expect them to just sit there and whine because they're in an environment they don't know on the surface they don't know some this big wide open world but yeah, they were actually pretty good certainly Giddy was she'd walk around a bit and a little sniff the others because they're on grass all they wanted to do the other two was eat grass <laughs> so, okay you want to eat grass okay you're not going to get picked, are you, really? Because you're not walking around. You're not saying, hello, this is me. How are you doing? To the man who's come to see the puppies. So, therefore, you're less likely to get picked. Part of the reason why Giddy was picked is because I took two of them and he took Giddy. Yeah. I went to the area where they were going to walk, so he held her all the way. And she was loving the cuddles. you got a sticky, Molly. Good sticky. Red loose. Lucy! 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 Where's Lucy? Lucy Lou! There you are. Right, ah, uh, uh. Right, behave yourself. Where were you? God knows where she was. It took her long enough to come to back, didn't it, really? Me? Hey? She's going through the woods now. Okay. <laughs> Stay where I can see you though, Luce, okay? Be a good girl. Yeah, I was watching um, the Judy Hartley Brewer uh, talk radio, her bit. And yeah, they were speaking a lot about the fact that she had a lot of people on um, during her three hours. She does three hours. No, four hours. No, three and a half hours. There you go, got them in. Um, half past six to ten o'clock she does. Jesus Christ. I mean, the morning show's got to be hard, but some people are the morning people. They're good at mornings. Other people are good at sort of evenings, so she's obviously a good morning person, isn't she? She's very good at that. Riley, come here. Come here, Riley. Come here, mate. 
someone ahead with kids. Oh, they're going to take ages. We might just have to go past them. They've got young children, of course. Young children want to look at the houses, which is cool. Of course they do. But, yeah. <laughs> got to get these around. Can't wait all day for you to move. So, uh, we'll see. Because it won't be long before we've got someone coming behind us with a dog. That's going to happen at some point. Wait, come here. Marty. Marty. Amber. Come here. Marty. Marty. Here. Oh dear. Part of the reason why the doggies were jumping is because one of the kids was jumping up and down screaming. So, of course, <laughs> the dog said, Oh, fun, we, we, we want to play. So, yeah, the, the mothers are trying to tell their daughters, or that daughter, to, to just be quiet. Yeah. That's what doggies love, a bit of excitement. When they get excited, they jump up to say hello. Because that's what they do, that's what doggies do. Hi. But yeah, yeah, they were talking about um, COVID. And one chap, I've forgotten what his Dale Yeadon, I think his name is, something, something like that. Um, he was basically saying that he thinks that COVID is basically done. Already. It's, it's basically finished. Basically finished doesn't mean completely finished. It just means basically finished. And basically what, what he's saying is that he believes that it's, it's gone through the country. And through the major cities, it's already gone through the major cities or is sort of, you know, in the process of finishing going through the major cities. And that, yeah, quite a lot of these cases that are coming up right now, because we don't have the deaths to go with the cases, they just don't correlate at all. It's most likely that these are cases from a long time ago. People were infected with COVID. Yeah, and people that were carrying COVID, but not anymore, but it's still in their system. And, yeah, they've also looked at the fact of an awful lot of these cases of people, supposedly COVID deaths in hospitals, aren't actually COVID deaths at all. You get someone who goes in a hospital for one thing, while in hospital, what do they say? At least 17% of people that die in hospital with COVID caught COVID in hospital. So they didn't go in with COVID, they caught it while in hospital. Now, they're still counted as COVID deaths. But they shouldn't be, should they? So that means 17% of the COVID deaths you can take off. Say so they're not COVID deaths. So that's quite a percentage, really. You know, and that's the only uh, estimation, probably of the lower level estimation. It could be far higher than that. Because like, they test people, and if they've tested positive for COVID in the first days of ten, 10 days of being in the hospital, they count as a COVID patient, even though they weren't a COVID patient when they first went in. They had no symptoms whatsoever of COVID when they first went in. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a sloppy bit. Nearly went in that bit. Not a good idea. So, basically what this person is saying is that he thinks that, you know, COVID is pretty much spent in most cases. That, yeah, there are areas of the north of England. Well, we're talking about UK-wise. North of England, some areas of the outskirts of Scotland. You know, the islands and highlands where, you know, COVID is going to still be a slight problem for people that have not been um, what's the word um, touched by COVID by areas that have not been touched by COVID but there's obviously people there who are vulnerable to COVID like they'd be vulnerable to the flu and if COVID goes to those areas those people might die but that does not mean it's a second wave of COVID because it isn't. That's not proven to be the case in any way, shape or form. Yeah, because if you look at it from the point of view, the false positives. And a false positive basically means you get a positive test of COVID 
from someone who may have had COVID in the past. Not anymore. What the heck was that? Was that a mouse or a vole or something? Something just ran along the ground, something small. Weird. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. That was, that was, okay. Oh, no, it's a birdie. Oh, it's a birdie. I swear the birdie. Little brown birdie. Little brown birdie was walking on the grass. Well, running. You've got wings, you nutter. What are you running for? Fly. <laughs> oh, you can fly far quicker than what you, what you can run. Little tiny legs with no leg muscles, really. So, use your wings. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah, false positive means, you know, you're tested for COVID because, like, students, for example. Students go back to, u to uni. They all have to be tested for COVID, right? So, what if a load of those people had COVID, you know, a few months ago? Didn't have any symptoms of it, but had COVID. Well, this test is going to show anyone who's had COVID as well as anyone who has COVID. It can't differentiate between has and had. All it can say is that there's COVID in that person's system. So suddenly there's a case. But a case, today's case, even that may have been a case that, you know, two months ago it was a case, but not anymore. Right? That can go into the lump of the amount of cases but it can't really go on today's case. Because what it looks like is suddenly you've got a massive load of cases. Why? Because you're testing all these kids that are going back to school. You're testing all these students that are going back to uni. You're also testing all the instructors. So suddenly your testing is increasing massively. Certainly amongst people who, if they get the virus, they probably wouldn't even know it. So they've had it, they didn't know it, and now they've got to be locked down. Suddenly, everything in the country looks panicky because, oh, we've got all these cases everywhere. False positive. That looks to be the case. That looks to be what it is because the death rate has not increased. You know, so if, if the way they're counting hospital administrations of COVID is wrong... If the way they're counting other things is wrong, you can't look at any of this and say, well, okay, that means that we've got a problem. The only way you can tell you've got a problem is are the cases of COVID deaths, actual proper COVID deaths, people going in, needing a respirator, you know, dying of COVID conditions, not someone who's died and just so happened to have COVID, in their system at some bloody point over the last three or four months. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you've had eight months to, to produce a test, a proper vigorous test that can tell you whether the person actually has COVID now. I mean, there's another way of testing. Did someone die of COVID? Were they on a ventilator? Were they not able to breathe for themselves? That's one sign, isn't it, really? If they died of heart disease, quite likely it wasn't COVID. It was heart disease. But, no, it's all lumped in COVID because if you can test someone and you can find COVID in their system, you put it amongst COVID deaths. Now, that is that is a nasty cheat. The reason why I say it's a nasty cheat is because there's been a lot of talk about the people who have heart problems, people that have cancer, people that have issues with strokes and stuff like that, who are not getting treated. Now, part of the way of hiding deaths of those people because of the way we're reacting to COVID or overreacting to COVID is to pretend that their deaths are COVID deaths and not actually deaths relating to things that could have been sorted had we not have massively overreacted to COVID. 
Yeah, because it's like yesterday, uh, Judy Hartley Brewer on her show was talking about the H. Who? World Health Organization. We're basically saying that even the deaths of COVID, right? That per population, it's going to be 0.05%. Less of a percentage than the flu. Yet we've never, ever have we locked down a country because of flu. Now, the Spanish flu, we didn't even lock down the countries because of that. Maybe they should have done, but they didn't. And as far as I know, I don't think they did. I'm not exactly an expert on Spanish flu, but I don't believe they, they shut down countries because of it. But here we have something which is basically less of a killer than the flu. Miley! God knows what you're trying to eat. Pack it up. Molly, leave. So if it's less deadly, deadly according to the World Health Organization, than the flu, what on earth are we doing? Why on earth are we panicking so much over something which is... Well, look... The people that have died, yes, it's terrible. But those people that died, had there been a bad flu this winter, they would have died. Right? Now, as terrible as that may be, they would have died. That's the reality. You know, they were old, they were weak, they had, you know, what's it called, um, issues that were making them susceptible to an incredibly bad reaction. To anything like that. So, yeah, they would probably have died. That's the reality of the situation. Yeah, they died a bit early or they died a bit late because yeah, we've not had a bad flu for a while. We were due one, absolutely. But maybe instead of getting the bad flu, we've got COVID instead. You know, so... Look. If the World Health Organization is saying it's 0.05%... Right, which is incredible, not even 1% of the population. Not even 1%. Not even 0 0.5. 0.05 is what they said. 0 0.05. That's not even 0 0.1 of a percent. Half of that. I think. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I just got into an area of math that's like, woohoo, straight in my head. No idea. <laughs> that was that was a moment there. I'm thinking, is it? It seems like it should be, but <laughs> I don't know, actually. Would that be the case? I have no idea. But, basically, yeah, we... A lot of people are now saying what I've said for a long time. Now that, yeah, the government... Basically, it went down a road, went down this panicky road and locked us all down for a while. Now, instead of actually admitting, look, we overreacted. We did it because we wanted to protect people, but we did overreact at that point in time. We didn't necessarily need to lock down everyone at that time. We did it because of the fact of what was happening in other countries, and we saw we didn't want a massive death toll in our country. Right? Riley, come. Come on, mate. Hiding in the belly bushes. Nutter. Oh no, I couldn't see you. Yeah, instead of doing that, they're doubling down. They say we've got to double down because we can't admit that we're all wrong. So let's be doubly wrong. Let's create a system or a situation. Situation, it's quite completely different to a system, but a situation. Let's create a situation where we're basically going to be completely unelectable in the future. Yeah, I've already asked people. You've got people that <laughs> said they voted for the Conservatives before, but they won't vote for them again. Well, who are you going to vote for them? You can't vote for Labour. Look at who they've got. They've got some German bloke in charge. Yeah, look at his name. He's German. Clearly. <laughs> yeah? He's not German. Probably not. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh dear. But probably not. Keir Starmer. His name sounds very German, doesn't it, really? Yeah, so how can he be elected as a leader of the UK? He's got a very, very German-sounding name. I suppose it's possible because a lot of the people that fought in the war against Germany have passed on there. There's not a lot of people that are alive that would be highly offended by a German-sounding name being the name of the leader of the country. So, it could be, but I mean, he's a lawyer. He doesn't have any policies. He's, he's rather drab and droll and... Yeah, if you were trying to revitalise the Labour Party, would you really put him in charge? To me, you put him in charge if you want the Tories to continue you know, being in power for the next 10 years. You don't put him in charge if you want your party to be challenging, because that's not him. So, who do you pick? But you've got a situation where, you know, Tory, Molly, leave! You've got a situation where Tories are basically saying, you know, we care about how it looks on us. We don't care about you. We care about how it looks on us. And you've got people going on to these talk shows who just back the government line, even though everything is screaming and saying the government line is wrong. But they back it. They back it because they have to. And Julie Hartley Brewer earlier, brilliant. She had one of the... Uh, Tory MPs on and she got quite annoyed with me in the end she just said look I'm finishing the interview here because I'm talking about false, false positives and none of you people seem to understand what false positives actually are or what they mean you know can I just have somebody who actually understands this and of course the MP was smiling he knows exactly what she was talking about he was playing the idiot because of the fact that he was just wanting to back the government line. If he says he understands what false positives are, he understands the whole point of that, then he has to go against the government line. He won't do it. And this, to me, is where I have a major problem with politics and politicians, you know? Look, politicians, you may have one year left as a politician. You may have one year left as a human. Why not do something with that year? Lucy, come. You're trying to get tickies or something, are you? Nasa. Dozy dog. Yeah, as a politician, why not do something? Why not be real, be honest? Stop telling the party line. If your party's wrong, stop, stop, stop telling that line. If they're wrong, they're wrong. Yeah? best thing to do is get that out in the open so we can go in the right direction. If you don't have the courage to do that, you shouldn't be in politics. Simple. Simple as that. If you're a coward, you shouldn't be in politics. And if it's all about you and your seat and you protecting your position, again, you shouldn't be in politics. You are supposed to be there to represent the people, not just the people that voted for you, the people in general. The country. What you got, Roos? You take it. Go on, bud. You got a bit of bark. Oh, that's why she's barking all the time. She likes bark. <laughs> See? And not bark the mu musician, the old musician, the one who's dead. She ain't got bark. Bark. From a tree. Woof, woof, from a tree. There you go. You got your woof, woof. Good, good. You got your woof, woof, Roos. At least you got a woof, woof. Go on, go on. There you go, you take the woof woof. There you go, woof. Lucy, you got a woof woof woof. You got a woof woof, Lucy. There you go, you take it, Lucy. You sort, sort out the woof woof. Which bit are you taking? You don't know, do you? Don't know what you've got now. Still got a bit? Good, okay. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> oh, they're all fun and games, isn't it? That's it with politicians. Oh, you can't trust them. You can't. I mean, you should be able to, but you can't. I mean, it's not exactly where the system encourages them to behave in that manner. It doesn't. It's not that cutthroat. It's not as if, you know, the people are going to be voting based upon the record of the politicians. They don't know the record of the politicians. They don't really care. You know, people don't really care. Is Are you Labour? Right, I'm going to vote you. Are you Conservative? Right, I'm going to vote you. 
Most people are like that, really. That's where most people see it. I'm going to come here. Some people vote based on, you know, what they want to see happen. But not most. Come here. Now, here. Come here. Come here now. Right, there you go. I'll leave you to it. God bless. Bye-bye.